About four years ago, a friend and I started a company called Looking Glass Factory. And the idea of this company was to take the holograms that we saw in science fiction when we were growing up and to make them real. And now, today, we work with about 30 people all around the world, and we experiment and invent and refine and develop holographic cameras, displays, and illusions. What you're seeing here are some videos of one of our latest displays. A hologram is the idea of making a three-dimensional scene appear in front of you when, in fact, there's nothing there. It's all about the illusion, presenting to your eyes the idea that there's this scene that feels exactly like reality. This could be an image we have captured of the real world. This could be an interactive virtual world but it has to feel real. I want to show you another video. This is me and a friend, Carlos Toro, who's an underwater videographer. And this is us six weeks ago with a holographic camera that I designed in Ecuador, filming giant manta rays. Now, this was a project with kind of two different ideas. It's an experiment, really. One is to test out this holographic camera that I had built, a prototype. A holographic camera is different than a regular camera. A regular camera has one perspective, one point of view. And a holographic camera captures from many, many different perspectives. It has the idea of capturing the entire scene, or a lot of it. The other was the idea of, could we go someplace wonderful in the world, take a holographic capture, a recording, of something there and bring it back to recreate holographically, to take this thing which is special and bring it again. So this is the video of some of those manta rays in one of our displays. And the illusion we strive for when we present these is to feel like this manta ray, which is gigantic. It's the largest ray in the world, 24 feet from tip to tip, is shrunk down perspective correct, and is there in a tiny box on your desk. But for the rest of this talk, I'm not going to tell you how the hologram works. I don't want to talk about technology, because we are not a technology company. We are an invention company and a storytelling company. We do experiments, we do inventions, and then we write the stories that explain how those inventions come out into the world. And that's what I want to tell you. These experiments I just showed you, I want to tell you the story of how these will go out into the world. And that story starts with my daughter. I have a daughter named Lumen. She's three years old, and she's here. Hi, Lumen. And ever since she was born, my wife and I would take Lumen to the aquarium, and we would go and Lumen would go up and press her face against the glass and look through the glass like a portal into another world. She would see these animals, this environment that behaves, that follows different rules than the one she is used to in her day-to-day -day life on the east side of Providence. It's a way to expose her to something she wouldn't ordinarily get to see. And I love that idea that this is what an aquarium affords us. But I work with illusions, and the hazard of working with illusions is that you can't stop thinking about them. And going to aquariums and looking at fish through the glass, this nagging thought started kicking around in the back of my head. How do I know that those fish are real? That's a goofy question, but it's a philosophy question. It's not a technology or a fish question. How do you know anything is real? You experience it with your senses. It's the best we can do. So if you think about looking at fish through glass, well, what do you sense about it? Can you hear it? No, you can't hear it. Can you touch it? You shouldn't touch it. Can you smell it? In a good aquarium, you don't smell the fish. Can you taste it? Do you think this is legal seafoods? Go home! <laughs> you see it. You can see it. And that sight is our key way of sensing an animal behind glass. But 
Our eyes aren't reality sensors. Our eyes are image sensors. The strongest thing I can say about the reality of a fish I see in an aquarium is that my eyes saw images of a fish. And for a guy like me who makes illusions that presents images to your eyes, it says nothing about if you are perceiving reality. All it says is that you saw an image. And this gives birth to this other, even more disquieting question, which is if we don't know that the fish are real, do they have to be there? I mean, I'm not even talking about from the fish's point of view. If from the fish's point of view, this is definitely not good that it's there. From my point of view, I go to an aquarium to learn about nature. And I want to see animals and understand how they live in their natural environment. But when I go to an aquarium now, I see animals in captivity. I don't see large-scale behaviors like migration. You can't show that in an aquarium. I don't see the collision of ecosystems from different parts of the world coming together. You can't show that. I don't see behaviors like predation. Fish don't eat one another. And I don't see the man-made effects, the man-made effects on nature. When I go to an aquarium, I see idealized nature. I see an environment constructed how we want nature to be in the best way. And we don't actually see what is reflected in reality. At the beginning of the talk, I showed you this holographic camcorder that I built. And it really is like a camcorder. I carry it around, and it more or less captures a hologram from the cameraman's perspective. I want to stretch that idea a little bit and present the idea of a fixed holographic camera, one that captures an entire area inside of this camera from all different perspectives, where you can capture the information necessary to recreate a hologram of a portion of the ocean. You could install this in the ocean and transmit that hologram out into the world to be displayed at that instant somewhere else. It's like capturing, taking a part of the world and transporting it elsewhere. I told you about taking my daughter to the aquarium. And I want to tell you what it's going to be like in 30 years when I take my granddaughter to the holoquium. Uh, you guys don't know this yet, but in 30 years, we're going to have one here uh, in downtown. It's going to be right where the Dunkin' Donuts Center is. Um, <laughs> You guys are going to love it. <laughs> Stay tuned. But I take my granddaughter to the holoquium. She's on my shoulders. And as we walk up, the first thing we see towering up amongst the skyscrapers and standing over the private parking lots of downtown Providence, we see a kelp forest, huge kelp waving in ocean currents that we cannot feel that are from somewhere far, far away from us. My granddaughter slips from my shoulders, and she runs up to the wall of the holoquium. She puts her hand against the wall, and she feels like she is there, like she is a scuba diver on the bottom of the ocean. She looks up, and there is a huge environment dwarfing her. She sees sea lions diving down, chasing mackerel. If she looks up to the surface, she sees cormorants diving in, swimming 20, 30 feet below the water, capturing sardines in their mouth and resurfacing. We spend the afternoon together here. We look at scenes happening around the planet at this instant. We see ecosystems. We see behaviors that are playing out as we stand there. We see stories of ecosystems colliding, of animals doing things that are only seen in the wild. And we also see the effects that we have. Because we are showing real images from nature, we're not showing an idealized version of anything. We're showing things that are happening now. And that means we capture both the beauty and the ugliness that we cause on the planet. It's like a, a visual health gauge showing us what's happening right now. And I look at my granddaughter's eyes, and she is captivated. She feels connected to these stories of lives, of ecosystems, of nature playing out thousands of miles from where she is right now. She feels like she is a part of these stories. Technology has a bad rap of being adversarial or destructive to nature. And it deserves that bad rap. But it's my hope 
that through the work we do at my company, through the work of others in this field of advanced holographic imaging and capture, that we can also use technology to make us closer to nature, to make us feel more connected to the stories that are happening right now all over this planet, every second of our lives that would otherwise be unseen and unthought of, to let us feel that we are a part of this planet. And where better for an idea like that, wait, <laughs> to take root than here in the ocean state. Now you can clap. <laughs>